Hey guys and welcome back to our channel, this is Robert from Horizons. I am sure that some of you are pretty keen and eager to see this uh, episode 2 of PreSonus Studio 1 tutorial for beginners. So without any mumbling, jumbling, let's just jump right into it. Okay, um, let's open our new song. By the way, uh, I want to add something over here once you clicked on create new song there is a song title obviously you can write I'm gonna put test in this case test so you can you can name it and then you would have the uh, location of the song where is it gonna be saved to then of course you can change your settings as well before you open new project which is all right here it's pretty much self-explanatory um, and there's some templates which PreSonus Studio has. I uh, didn't talk about it yet. As you can see on this side right over here, I, well, majority of my projects I actually always start with empty song, but if you want to start with something what kind of preset for you, you can choose one of those templates if, if that works for you, such as band recording, uh, house techno instrument set uh, mixed range and so on even piano ballad rock ba rock band singer songwriter and so on so on but again for me personally it always works if i select empty song okay so here we are we are in workspace of the presonus studio one um, i'm sure like with any other door which you have seen for the first time it may be a bit scary and uh, it may put you off if you just starting and thinking oh my gosh what I'm gonna do trust me guys I've been there I've tried different doors but I can say one thing PreSonus Studio One is to me once you get a uh, grip of all the basics and once you get starting and recording your first songs uh, you will learn the other things you know as you go and it will become much more clear believe me it's just like with anything else it's just like with photoshop when you open it for the first time you don't know what to do but again don't give up okay uh, just try to watch as many tutorials i'll try to make it as easy as possible and one more thing i'd like to add i'm definitely mm, i don't consider myself as well like some kind of pro i still learn every day but i've been doing uh music production for some years now and I've tried many different doors uh, lately I sticked with the uh, PreSonus Studio One so I do believe I have certain knowledge to to show you basics which gets you going and if you if I miss anything from the basics please drop me comment or contact me directly through Facebook or even on our channel and I'll be more than happy to to answer all your questions and to help you if I can so let's just uh, start uh, with explaining of some uh, controls in PreSonus Studio One and some of the windows here so you will understand it a bit more. I guess I'm going to start on this side over here. So instruments, well this is all your instruments plugins here. Um, you can actually sort them by folder as you can see, vendor, so that'll be uh, the company which makes the plugins type but uh, I kind of recommend I always keep it on vendor so that way I see which which plugins I have by the company for me for me personally this is the easiest way for example if I want to look for any plugins from Cakewalk I know I have them right over here and then if I click on it then this is all my plugins which I have from Cakewalk or anything from air technology if i click on this little arrow here next to the folder it'll open and gives me the option of all of my plugins which i've installed uh, from air music technology company so it's really useful it's uh, sorted from a to z so it's quick you can find it very quick and uh, like i said i prefer it on the vendor so i do recommend it that way Obviously, these are the third-party plugins. This one over here, PreSonus, 
those are the plugins which comes with the with the PreSonus Studio. Um, so we have Impact, Maite, Moji, Mojito, or Mojito, Presence, and Sample One. But anything else what you see in this window, in my case, these are all my third-party plugins. Now, guys, bear in mind this can be different in your case, as I'm not sure what kind of plugins you have installed. Once you just got the PreSonus Studio One and you didn't install any third-party plugins, such as uh, instruments I'm talking about, then you will have only the PreSonus, possibly the uh, rewire there, but everything else you would have to install separate as a third-party plugins. Okay, so this is the instruments tab. Now, um, effects just next to it, obviously the same thing. Um, I have them selected by vendor, so again, the company which makes the effects. If I want to go to whatever soft tube, I click on it the same way. I have the saturation knob installed. If I want to go to Slate Digital, the same thing. So this is all the plugins for the effects which I have under the Slate Digital and so so on, so on. So exactly the same thing applies on effects. It's really easy. It's really easy to navigate. It's quick so you can see straight away which plugins you want to use. And uh, I think I think it's very very visible and very easy to navigate. Uh, next one, next tab, next to the effects, right over here, it's loops. Well, I don't have any. Those are the PreSonus loops which you can purchase or uh, download. But again, I don't use too much loops myself. I don't have any over here. Now this tab, right next to loops, this is something what is quite interesting and very helpful so if you didn't mess with it yet and you didn't click on it or anything i'll just explain to explain it to you right now so the files tab has pretty much all your files like a wav files or mp3s and uh, so you basically just go into desktop and then look for your files now in my case i have horizons projects for example, um, over here, as you can see, these are the WAV files I have been using in previous songs. So I have direct access. I don't have to drag them from separate window or from desktop. I can access them directly from PreSonus Studio One. So it's under files. And this is pretty much your, your computer files. So anywhere you save it, that's where you have it. And since we are here, I'm going to show you something real quickly. I think I saw many, many questions on Facebook uh, forums and groups uh, from newcomers, from people who never used PreSonus Studio One before. They were asking how you actually drop a WAV file into your project. Well, using this tab, it's very easy, guys. All you have to do, you just select your WAV file, which you want to use. I'm going to select this one, for example. You click on it, hold the mouse button, the left button, and drag it, and release the button. Well, here it goes. This is your WAV file. So it's really just that easy. You only drag and drop. If I click on it with the left button to make it active and just press delete, delete on the keyboard, it'll delete it. Um, as you can see, this, this tab stayed here when I delete the actual WAV file, but I can click on it with the right button and just remove track or shift plus T and it'll remove it. Okay. So again, you want any WAV file into your project. Once you select it, what, once you find it in the files, you just select it with the left mouse button, hold it, drag it. That's it. I'm going to make it smaller here so you can guys see it. I'm going to delete it now. So again, find the WAV file which I want to use into my project. Select it, left, left uh, button on the mouse, drag and drop, just like that. That's how it works. And you access those through the files. But again, it depends where you saved your files in your computer, which can be different. This This can look completely different in your case because you might have different folders on your C drive or D drive, whatever. So 
anyways this is the way how to select your wave files you don't have to go somewhere external you don't have to look through them you don't left you don't have to look for them on desktop and then just dragging them from there you can do it in your presunus studio one under files tab okay um, let me just delete it real quick now cloud these are all the files uh, associated with the cloud accounts and presonus shop you can purchase them there or or on the soundcloud i don't really use this tab to be honest uh, so i'm not gonna show you anything from there as i don't use it but uh, if you do use it from the cloud soundcloud whatever if you have any any wave files or samples there uh, go ahead and use it but i personally don't use it and the pool well this is these are the files which i have been working with since i opened a new project so as you can see at the moment there's three files three wave files those are the files which i opened for you as an example just a few just a minute ago when i was under the files and i was showing you how to drag and drop the wave files well these are the files they are getting stuck here under pool option so you can get easy to them once you for example you are in the middle of your project and then you remember that you need to drag again the same file which you opened before so you don't have to go and look for them in files you can just return to pool and then they will be there saved automatically so all the files all the audio files you are working with are being saved as you working with the project right over here under the pool so this is actually quite useful as as well obviously you don't have to do it that way you can go back to files and just select the file again but i i think this this is quite good uh feature there so it's up to you if you use it or not okay now as you as you just saw i clicked on this little house uh kind of icon and this is the same thing it gives you the same things what i was showing in those tabs from left to right but now it's from up to down except now it explains kind of short explanation what it is so as i said instruments show instruments and the note effects now effects show installed effects so you know technically it tells you what it is so you really don't have to look for any explanation because the explanation is right over here and then the separate tabs as i was showing it to you um, so that's about kind of all basics about this part of the window i hope this this uh, explanation at the moment help you to navigate more easier for future so we are going to move down here and for the controls i will try to cover as much basics as i can and uh, you know the most important facts so performance you know your cpu hard drive will be showing as you're playing the sound as you're playing the songs back it's just a visual thing for your for your information and then your kilohertz setting and record time total record time then this one here the bars which uh, you can actually change this if you click do you see that little bars underneath that just very small letter if you click on that area with the left uh, left button on the mouse you can change it to seconds samples bars or frames um, I usually keep it on bars but it's also useful to change it to seconds if you need to know how long is your song um, so as I press play at the moment the seconds are being counted as you can see right over here seconds minute hours whatever um, so I do use this option if I return back I also use bars which that tells me which bar i am at at the moment so if i press play i'm first second now third and so on so forth so i personally use only bars or seconds depends really what i want to find out about the song um, now you got the main playing stop uh, forward re and rewind controls obviously record button and loop 
Um, this is, I think, uh, very easy for anyone to understand. So obviously we have our stop button, play button. Now one more thing I want to add real quick. As you can see, as I'm, as I'm going through those controls and I leave the mouse little longer on the button without moving it, it'll tell me what it is. So if I move my mouse on the play and leave it for a little bit longer without moving, it says start, enter. So basically it tells you also the shortcut, which you can access on your keyboard. Uh, so the play will be enter. For the stop, it will be numpad number zero on the keyboard to stop. And the same for any other buttons applies. Um, so obviously this is, this one over here is, let's, let's hit play. And then we have return back over here on the beginning of the project, return to zero, that's the name of the button. Then we have go to next marker. Now we have fast forward and rewind, fast rewind, and then go to previous marker if you're using markers, which I covered in my diff in my other tutorial on our channel. So you can search the tutorials about markers. It's uh, explained over there. And um, from this part over here, there is a couple important settings which you can use in your songs. So one of the most important part would be the tempo. Now you can change that of course by clicking on it, double clicking and on your keyboard. So if you decided to record a song in tempo of 80 bars per minute, uh, I'm sorry, 80 beats per minute, then you just type it and hit enter. So again, I double click on it, make it active. If I want it if I wanted the song to be in 100 beats per minute, then I type 100 and hit enter on the keyboard and it'll automatically change. So that's how you change your tempo manually. You just have to double click on that number and change it. I'll put it back to 120. And then you have your timing. If you click on it, double click on it, you got selection of uh, two quarters and then four four which is the most standard for the music and so forth so this would be the timing and then metronome so metronome well this little circle here it's called pre-count if this is selected uh, once you select it, it it turns light blue so just for your information once you select it it actually pre-counts and you can you can set up that pre-count and to, to do it, you have to click on that little wrench key just next to the little circle. In the middle is the little icon, looks like a wrench key. If you click on that, it's called metronome setup. And as you can see here, uh, you can select the accent, the beats and offbeat and also different sounds for it. So at the moment by default is as a click. The beat uh, so every beat clicks as well and every off beat clicks as well but you can change it if you want off beat to be uh, cowbell then you just select it from the drop down menu and now you have accent will be each accent clip click each beat will click and each off beat will uh, use the sound of cowbell so it's your preference it's your preference how you set it up uh, the actual metronome sounds and as you can see by default it's well because I checked it over here so pre-count is checked at the moment you can also select pre-roll if you want to by clicking on it and you can also select how many bars you will have your pre-count so usually by default is always one bar one two three four that will be your pre-count but you can select it on two bars if if that's what you want to and again, you will do it right over here. Um, that would be just like really the most important information about that metr metronome setup. And the actual metronome, you will act, uh, you will turn it on by clicking on the next little icon, which looks like a mini metronome triangle, pretty much. Uh, if you stay with the mouse on it for a couple seconds, it'll show you metronome and to, act, to activate it with the keyboard only, if you hit C, 
it's activated. If you hit C again, it's deactivated. So you got pre-count in the middle, that's the setup of your metronome, and then metronome on your right hand side. On the left pre-count, on the right uh, actual metronome. Okay, you don't have to use it, that's completely optional. Someone likes to record without pre-count, which I kind of personally find very difficult, but if you want to do it that way, please go ahead and do it that way. Um, so that covers that. Well, there is a couple small other options which I'm not going to get into right at the moment. But again, if you do need to know something else which I didn't cover, please let me know, write those comments, give those likes, whatever, I will honestly try to answer uh, on every questions given. Okay, so uh, what we're gonna do next is a little bit of this area over here. Um, so say that you just started and you want to start recording the song. Say that you installed some some instruments or you want to use the one which, which came with PreSonus Studio One. So you will go obviously to your instruments by clicking on the tab or if you are on that house icon as I stated before you can click simply on instruments. Then you select your instrument. Let's just go with some instrument from PreSonus. So say uh, present or no mojito whatever. And this is what I'm gonna do now. So how you get a new instrument onto this part so you can be recording that instrument? Well, there's uh, two different or actually three different options, but the way how I do it and I found it most easiest, at least for me, is just simply uh, find the instrument I want to use, select it with the mouse, again, hold it and drag it not over here, but over here and then drop it. There you go. Now we have an instrument in our workspace ready to be recorded. Now, something very important. A lot of people uh, do this mistake in the beginning. I did it myself when I when I started recording in different DOS. Uh, there is a little button which calls monitor. Now it's by default it's active and it it's light blue as you can see right over here. Now, I'll tell you something, guys, something important. If this button would be off, as it is now, and you have this armed for recording, and then you hit record, well, it'll st start pre-count if you have it selected. It'll start recording. It'll start moving here. But you won't hear anything from your headphones or from your monitors if this button isn't on. That means that you are not monitoring. You don't hear it. So, obviously, if you're playing on MIDI keyboard, you're recording some instrument, and even if you have a headphones on your head or if you're monitor through your uh, studio monitors at the desk, you won't hear the sound because this button needs to be on for you to hear sound, okay? Another thing, obviously, if this button is off and only this button is on, then you can hear the sound by playing it back, but you cannot record, because if you hit record here, it won't record the actual track, as this button is not active. So for recording, make sure you have this button active, it turns red, as it states record, and this button for monitoring. Okay, then you are ready to hit record over here and start recording your your uh, instrument. Okay, um, one thing before I go any further, I can show you actual sounds from the instruments. As for some reason, when I'm recording the screen with this with this software, it doesn't record back the actual system sounds. I've tried everything possible. It does work in different DOS which I have installed in my in my computer, but for some reason it doesn't record system sounds as I'm recording with the uh, with the software. So sorry, I can't show you any sounds at the moment from the from the uh, instruments, but that's not important at the moment because I'm trying to teach you some basics basics of controls in PreSonus Studio One. Anyways, so these two buttons, remember, they are very important. Now, M is mute and S is for solo. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna record anything. As I said, I 
you cannot hear any any sounds from the instrument but I'm gonna manually draw the line and pretend this part was recorded and obviously to play back you can have record disarmed if you if you wish to but you don't have to do it uh, if you want the track to be soloed you just click on solo if you want it to be muted while you're playing the others you just click on mute it's it's really easy guys like I mean there is no there is the, it's just simple i don't think there is any big deep problems into under, into understanding this this particular part anyways um what you can also do you can extend this by dragging it down and revealing the other options of the actual track so at the moment it's selected mojito instrument it goes through all inputs and then we have an output but don't really have to mess by default with that option at the moment as you're just learning the basics and you may have asked how I'm gonna sh how I'm gonna see the actual plugin over here because it kind of disappeared as you can see. Well, easy. You see this little keyboard kind of little icon here. If you just click on it once with your uh, left mouse button, it'll show. So if you ever close the plugin and then you freak out, oh my god, I can't see it, I can't tweak the plugin. Well, you just go back to whatever track you have and you want to see for example the first track your vst plugin instrument then you just click on that little keyboard it's like an instrument editor that's how they call it but once you click on it the plugin shows up um, so don't get freaked out i mean i did myself i'll be honest when i didn't know i said oh my god how i'm gonna reveal that plugin i can't see it i can't find it well this is the button here and um now let's get to okay well one more thing so let's say that this was recorded as an instrument and then you had some audio it was some sample which goes with your music so again you select the sample from the files as i show you in the beginning of this tutorial and you drag it over here it'll automatically assign audio channel right over here for you so now you can see that you have a two channels already now another thing what you can do with uh, those tabs over here those trucks let's call them trucks actually now the thing what i wanted to explain say that you recorded some strings whatever on this channel but as you can see by default the name over here it says mojito as the name of the plugin well if you double click on that area it'll become active and now you can change it and you can call it strings for example strings one hit enter there you go uh, this won't change by default because you recorded it as a mojito plugin so over here it does show mojito but for your reference as a track it does show string one because i just renamed it and say because i dragged this wave file over here so it's showing in this space the name of the actual file but if you wanted to do, rename it, the same thing applies. You just click twice and say vocal one, whatever you want to name it. It's up to you, of course. This is an example only. But straight away, you're starting to get a little bit of organization into your song because you just named it as you want it. So you can you can once you have the song of i don't know say 10 tracks or more you can orient a little better around the songs as you know which which track is what uh, another nice feature it's a little nice touch which you can do and a lot of people do it different ways is you can actually color your track do you see on the very very corner on the edge it's like a little stripe so this track by default was dropped as kind of grayish but if i click in that area right over here right over here that little kind of stripe i click on it then i get the colors to choose so if i wanted this string track 
to be a uh, kind of yellowish I will select it by just going uh, with my mouse cursor and click on it and the same for second channel uh, say I don't like it that kind of bluish say I want it green I select the color right there that's how it is it easy it is it's just by clicking on that little stripe in the very beginning so once it's gray as a default, it's almost impossible to see. But if you know this feature, please use it as, especially if you have a big song projects, because there's many reasons for that. Some people like it visually just to look at it. And some people use it as a, as a detector, which, which kind of, which kind of instruments say, is it, for example, some people would say, okay, I'm going to use all my drums will be red. So then once they have uh, all drums recorded, they would choose red color. And again, this is just an example again, of course. But that way that person would know, okay, all my drums are red. Straight away visually, not only by looking at the name, but straight away visually they would know, okay, this track is definitely drums. The same applies to vocals, to any other instruments. It's really up to you. If you want to use it or if you want to keep it by default assigning just a similar grayish colors or if you want to make it nicer and visually more attractive, it's really optional guys. I mean there is no right or wrong with this, okay? It's just something which you can use or you don't have to use. And one more cool feature, as I change the color of the track uh, by clicking on that stripe but you see this area where the where the monitor and record button and all the names are it still it still keeps to be like kind of grayish and there is something which you can do about it do you see this wrench above it's called options if you click on it under visibility there is a something called colorized track controls well look what it does if i click on it it does color the actual area over here as well, similar to your track. So, well, the reason I just show you this is this one. If I open my mixer, as I did now, do you see that the tracks are also colorized right over here in the mixer? So it's it's more visible. It's it's. Uh, more obvious which track is which I do recommend it to do it that way but again you don't have to that's your optional thing to do I do like to do it that way because I find it easier to work with once I have it that way now let's close the mixer and as we're coming closer to the end of this tutorial a couple more things access the mixer that will become one of your most favorite button in PreSonus Studio 1 at, at least it is for me it could be different for you, but on the keyboard under the windows, F3 opens the mixer. You can remember that. It's easy to remember. It'll save a couple seconds of steps. F3 hitting again will close the mixer. So F3 will open it and F3 hitting again on the same button will close it. All right. So remember mixer is F3 on the keyboard and windows um, we'll get in another tutorial uh, which I'm gonna cover the settings on the mixer itself so I will go into more details in the next tutorial and the last thing I'm gonna show you today to cover cover these basics here will be just uh, visual kind of visual thing so uh, in the bottom of the of this area right over here there is like a stack of little lines know how to call it exactly and if you kind of click with the left button on it and hold your left button on the mouse and move up or down this is what's happening you're making your tracks uh, bigger or smaller okay so as I'm pulling it up or down, that's how I'm changing that. Now, there is another option how to do this. Um, it's right over here. It's kind of presets. As you can see, if I click on that little 
little uh, arrow down I have option to set it to normal now it did set it to don to normal I have option to set it for example medium and also large or even minimal which is going to look like that so you technically you can see nothing uh, from the description right over there o overview will be slightly bigger and then tiny and so forth and so forth now the good thing to use it would be at least the way how I use it if I do have many trucks say more than 20 or 15 or whatever then once I'm playing the track back I kind of like it visually to be there so imagine that you have those 20 trucks right over here and you have it set on say medium well obviously in that settings even if you have a bigger monitors it's not gonna fit all over the screen so you would have to scroll down to see all the tracks so in that case again imagining that you have uh, loads of tracks in that case I would change it to overview and then I it would be all there obviously even if you have now 30 tracks it will be all there visible to you guys so this is quite useful to use it that way but again this is preferential this is optional so if you want to use it different way that's completely up to you guys but it's right here this is how you change the size of the actual tracks by this little icon uh, pulling it up or down or by this little option uh, selecting the presets and kind of similar things apply over here you might want to ask how to zoom it out or zoom it in uh, within the tracks from bars 1 to say bar 100 well it's right over here it's called time zoom now if I drag it now I'm making it bigger towards as you can see there is a little triangle on the left hand side and bigger triangle on the right hand side if I drag from one side to another so if I drag it closer to the smaller triangle I'm zooming out and making the track more visible throughout the te uh, throughout the time so if I zoom it all the way in the beginning the track will be all visible if I zoom it if I want to zoom it in I'll just drag it closer to the bigger triangle now this is obviously very useful once you have your song recorded or any parts of the song and you want to do some edits such as cutting slicing and so forth if you want to know where exactly you're cutting your wave file say that uh, there is a small little uh, silent area between uh, singing and another guitar and you want to slice it or cut it out if you obviously zoom it more it'll be more easier for you to cut exactly where you want to uh, it'll be obviously much harder if you have it that way and say that this was full of waveforms so that kind of area right here would be for me so difficult to cut if I have it zoomed all the way out but if I zoom it all the way in or at least making it much bigger and then move in my in my slider right over here this is probably too much say right here now I am able to cut this part for example and it's being very visible for me easier to do rather than it's much much smaller so this is this is how I use it it's very useful just remember it's right over in this side um, okay guys um, this is it for today I will cover the rest the rest options over here on top and then this couple of icons over here in the next tutorial I do hope that uh, this was helpful again for you especially for those beginners and uh, do not be afraid to drop me comments please do like the videos on YouTube if, if you really enjoy my tutorials and if you have any ideas for the next tutorials drop me a comments and you can contact me on uh, Presonus Studio Group which is on Facebook so whoever is member of Presonus Studio Group on Facebook you can contact me there directly I'm always posting links over there but you can also contact us through our official YouTube channel The Horizons and, um, and give us a like if you like it subscribe if you haven't yet or 
just uh, give comments, whatever, guys. <laughs> Sorry for the mumbling there at the end, but um, uh, I will be doing another tutorial very soon. I'm trying to do a mini series on this on this topic, uh, PreSonus Studio One for beginners. Now there's plenty of tutorials, as I mentioned in previous tutorial. Uh, you can Google it on YouTube, and I'm sure you find plenty. But as I was as I was browsing myself through those tutorials, most often I find tutorials which are intended for I would say professional or intermediate. Sometimes the people, to my own liking, talk too fast or they just jump from option to option really quick. Well, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm not saying that they don't know what they're doing. They definitely do. There is a lot of professional out there, a lot of nice tutorials. But I'm, I'm trying to help people who don't know how to start, who just see this program for first few hours and are kind of lost because we all have been there and that's my intention I want to help beginners so if you are guys professional uh, I, I believe this tutorial won't be just for you obviously you are more than welcome to watch it but again it's intended for beginners mainly and if I didn't cover something or if there's something else you wanted to to see again uh, drop me a comment ask me I will be more than happy to help if I can. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next tutorial. You're Take care guys. I care, but I haven't seen you while. Wish.